get. And um, there was a home that we were looking at and we had saved up a, a few thousand dollars. And the man said he would take all the money we had at that time and hold it for 10 months for us if we get our credit in line. Now, the, but the deal was this, if we didn't get our credit in line, we lost the down payment money. Now I told him, I said, I'll probably come see you. And so I said, I, I said, Jesus ain't finished with me yet. No, I'm just kidding. And so we believed and had a vision that God wanted us to obtain and possess our own home. And so we used, to, when I talk about vision, let me tell you this. I'm not just talking about believe in God for something. We used to drive to that home every single day, multiple times a day, in and out of the driveway next to it. And I think people thought we were casing the joint or something. And, and for months, we would go and vision us owning that home. I mean, we would see it. You, that you got to start seeing it You've got to see this thing, and a vision is deeper than you see in with your eyes. <clears throat> and so we would go visualize it with our eyes so our faith could build and we could get it down in here. Like, for instance, many of you trying to get clean and sober, and I don't believe you can. So you have to start seeing it and visualizing it so you believe you can. Sometimes you got to, you got to build your own faith. The good news is the Bible says that we've all been given a measure of faith, so it's already inside of you, and it's not like it's something that you really got to work on a whole lot. It's already there. You just got to get yourself to believe it. You got to believe what God has in store for you, and so you can have the faith to build your vision so you will not perish. So the, the problem that happens with a lot of that some of the time is that people do this. They get a little weary. You know, you, you start down the path. We could have been, it took us 10, actually it took us a little over the 10 months and he didn't call us in on it and try to steal our money. It took us about 11 months to get everything finalized, about seven, eight months, 10 months, nine months. We was getting there and all the paperwork's in and it, it just took a little longer. And so it was about 11 months. But, you know, somewhere along that way, you know, four, five, six months, we can say, I'm tired. You know, you get, you get weary and well-doing, it says. And the Bible says, you cannot get weary and well-doing for in due season. Somebody say, in due season, you, have, you shall reap if you will not faint. And so two people are fainting along the way. And uh, if you've ever seen the picture, uh, like I talk about social media, I see these memes and, and statements a lot. I love that stuff. And you see two guys digging, and, and one is about this close to getting to like a pot of gold, you know, the treasure on the other side of digging through a tunnel, and another guy's giving up and walking away, and he was also this close. And so it's like, don't give up before the miracle happens, we say. And so you got to keep going and keep going and keep going. And I'll say it again, keep going. Some days, sometimes every day feels like a, a groundhog day if you know the movie. You get up and here we go again. And you get up and here we go again. And sometimes it is like that. And so you got to stay faithful and don't get weary in the well-doing. And so as, as we obtained that home and things started to get better, uh, we, we noticed that as we started building a business, we had a vision for a clinical business. And so we started building that business and sure enough, it came to pass, we opened a business and we needed to obtain our own building so we wasn't always renting from somebody. As I told you, I believe that God wants us to possess and he, he, he wants us to, everywhere in my footsteps, I think he wants us to thrive and, and, and live victorious. And so we, we believe that me, you, everybody in my room, you should be owners. If you want to rent, that's fine. If you want to lease, that's fine too. But we believe people should be owners. That I, I don't believe you should go to buy here, pay here lots and, and get kind of cheated and ripped off, if you will. And I'm not saying nothing bad about their business. It's good. It's in the Bible. It says, you know, but the, you, the borrower would be subject to the lender and all those things. I, I don't think you should do all that if you can avoid it. I think we should be owners. And so we wanted to own our own building. And so my wife got me talked up. We would drive every day, visioning what we needed to do, where we could buy a building. We drove all over the city that we live in here in Huntington, West Virginia. And we looked at everything from, from the worst buildings and said, an old armory, all oh, it was devastated, ripped. It was bad. And then we, we find, found the building that we thought we may like. And it was too big for my liking. I said, honey, that's too big. And, and, and it was way too much work. And I said, We're now, this is too big a project. And we had it planned, it would be three, four million dollars to remodel it. And I said, I don't think this, this is just too big for us. And of course, my, my faith wasn't there yet. My, my wife was walking on water. I feel like we walk on water a lot. If, if you have a vision, you'll have to walk on water, by the way. What that means is you're going to have to get out there, where I call it God room. You're going to have to do something that's bigger than you, something that you can't do on your own, something that you can't do with good planning and organizing everybody else with good finances around you. You'll do something so big, if God don't show up, it don't happen. 
And, and we do that regularly, and that's what vision's all about, is that, that, you, uh, that you're implying that I, I'm walking with God, and when you're walking with God, God's going to do big things. God does things bigger than me and you. And so we, we kept looking at the building, looking at the building. We, we finally let the realtor let us look at it, and I oh, was devastation. I said, oh, no, we ain't have nothing to do with this. They done tore the plumbing out and electric out, and it never had been sprinklers in it, and they told us we need sprinklers and fire alarms, and it already needed new windows and a new parking lot. Well, today, one year later, here, here we are. We, we obtained that building, and we completely remodeled and did all the projects and things that I told you it needed. And it didn't cost nowhere near three or four million dollars. We did pretty affordable. But it's a brand new building. But we had a vision for that building. Now, I'm not sitting here bragging on me or my wife or things that we personally do. What I'm telling you is about how a person walking with the Lord will believe him and have vision for things bigger than me or you. Amen. So you got to have sight beyond your sight. It's a vision. You somebody say vision. So sight is you seeing what you can't see with your eyes, and vision is you seeing what you can't see at all yet. And it doesn't even look like it will be. Vision needs a vessel. You know, I, there's an old movie called the anybody remember the Mighty Ducks? Come on, man. You, I'm 47 this month, man. Anybody else remember the Mighty Ducks? Well, the Mighty Ducks, they had this plan. Was, they had a power move called the Flying V. Anybody ever seen the Flying V? You know, when, when ducks fly together, they make like this V. And I think it's because it takes the drag off each other, and they can fly much more efficiently when they fly in this V. So in, in the hockey, they, they, they found out if they could fly in, they, they'd come together in this V, they could block each other off and, and protect the puck. And it was a very famous move. But the coach had a vision for that move. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't execute it at all. He needed willing vessels, and it was very successful, this movie. You watch it in the movie. They used the flying V many times, and they always scored a goal on it. And so you, you're going to have to be a willing vessel and take direction from a coach. The coach had a vision, and the players were willing vessels. So will you be a willing vessel? Will you be a willing vessel and take direction from somebody who has a vision for you? Because I think too many of them trying to get better. And it's really just kind of messy fantasies and wishful thinkings. And so I think you should get in line with somebody who has a vision for you and be a willing vessel and walk out that vision until the Lord has freed you and you can, with you and the Lord, then you can take direction as the Lord from your coach. But you're still going to have to be a willing vessel. Too many times we're not wanting to be a vessel and we want to do our own thing or we want to claim it's God. You know good and well it wasn't. Many times we'll start a business and the Lord didn't tell us to do it. We started too early or wasn't even what we're supposed to do or we want to do this, we want to do that. Everything you want to do wasn't what the Lord said do. And I think many times we go, oh, Lord, just use me. And then when the Lord wants to use you, oh, ho, 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 not all that. Or I didn't want to do that. You know, we talk about retiring. Everybody wants to retire at 50 and you look at the Bible, nobody retired at 50. Moses was 75 and 85 years old, and the Lord was still giving him vision. Abraham was 100 years old and 90 years old. When he gave him the vision, he'd have a son. And, you know, I pray to God I can retire when I'm 50, but I, I want to get more active at that point that we have to have a vision and walk with the Lord. Now, the next thing I want to tell you is this it's very important. And I learned this along the way in my walk in the last 10 years, that anywhere where there is vision, there will be provision. You need some money, get a vision. You need some finances, get a vision. You, you need things to show up, get a vision. If there is a true vision, there will be provision. If the Lord brought it to be, the Lord will bring it to pass, amen? That I believe that when you're walking with the Lord, I don't need the bank to say yes. I don't need my credit to be just right. I don't need people to show up and hand me the money that the Lord will make things happen. During my early days when we, we had no way to do anything and I struggled to start the phase one of our farm program, I'd done so much and been out in the water, I kind of fleeced the Lord. I said, God, I'm not stepping out there on it. You said, you're going to need to move first on this one. And at that point, I, I, didn't, I didn't have very much of nothing, never seen much of anything. And I had somebody I'd never met before in my life hand up and hand me a $12,000 check. Now, I don't know if you know what that's like for a person about a year and a half out of prison. It's a really big deal. I knew that was God that showed up. She gave me the seed money that started a phase one to our program that now holds and houses 60 men at a time and, and gets more people sober than anything I've ever seen. That You know, when you have a 60-day plan where they get through a fifth step before they live in these sober recovery housing, it's just game changer. And a woman did that for me, so there was provision because I had a vision. So I'm telling you, wherever there's a vision, there will be provision. Now, the next thing I want to tell you is 
that if you've got a true vision, you're going to have to write it down. That's right. You can put it in the phone, but you're going to have to put it and write it down, and then you'll make some small goals that become big goals. Don't try to eat the whole thing all at once. I, they told me, they said, you can eat an elephant one bite at a time. And so you're going to have to make little goals. Eat a little bit of the elephant. Next thing you know, the leg's gone. Eat a little more, and then the half of it's gone. You know, so small goals make big goals, but it says you got to write it down. If you don't believe me, it's in the Bible. And Habakkuk 2, it says, Then the Lord said to me, Write down the vision and make it plain on tablets so a runner can carry the correct message. You're going to have to write it down, and I believe it's important to go back and visit that thing and read it and visit that thing and read it, and, and, and don't just give me a blanket, well, here's the vision, and, and you know how you're going to get there. I need an action, and it, it won't always be perfect, and some, a lot of that may even change, but you're going to have to have an action plan to make sure you line up with that because if a direction, the decision you follow today determines the future you create. See, a decision without proper action is really a fantasy. I said a fantasy. You make a decision and your action don't line up with it. It was really a lie, wasn't it? Now, I don't want to call nobody a liar tonight, but I've been a liar too in my life. I think we've all been that. Liars and hypocrites. And you, you say, I'm going to do this, but you never do anything that shows you're going to do that. Like, like a, these New Year resolutions, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. You never go to gym. You never change what you eat. You never commit. You never follow through. Well, you kind of lied. So that decision, that thought was really just a lie. In the book of James, it says, be you doers of the word, not hearers only. So you're going to have to make sure your action lines up with the vision. Somebody say amen again. And so I've seen way too many people get into their vision and sabotage it. Anybody see what I'm talking about? I've, I've seen many of my people, you start to get really get them into life, and they don't feel like they're worthy of it. So you must be ready for God to move. And it's time for you to win. Stop forcing your loss. That too many times, of us, so many of us are so used to losing, when we start to win, we jump back down in the hole. We force a loss. And I, I think it's time that my people and you people, that if you're watching tonight, you are my people, we people, that you're part of the movement. I think it's time that you win. So you got to start believing you can. You got to start believing God wants you to. And you got to start believing you, you're worthy of it. Stop, stop forcing the loss. God wants good for you. You're going to have to remember that tonight. I don't think I'll get into the story of Israel. We're getting close to closing. i got about 10 things I want to go through with you here real quick about principles that are important for your vision. So number one, surrender your whole life to God. You can't just give him pieces of or parts of it because we'll sabotage ourselves with self-will and lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh and pride of life. And Scripture says, but if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things, all these things, all things will be added unto you as well. And so I think it's pretty important to surrender your whole life as we start to dibble and dazzle, dabble into small things and they become sin. And we, we just get further and further away from the Lord. And we can't fulfill the vision that we could have walking with the Lord. Amen. Number two, confess any known sin. It says if I, uh, in Psalms, it says, if I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. That it's important to clear our life and our conscience and our sin out of us. Not that the Lord couldn't still hear me, but I'll certainly block myself off. In Colossians, it says we, we make ourselves, um, oh, I'll think of it here in a minute, that we, we make ourselves enemies in our own minds, it says in Colossians 1 21. It says we make ourselves enemies in our own minds. And, and so we got to confess our sin to, to clear that pathway between us and the Lord that, you know, obviously, Lord sure won't want to fool with me. I'll purposely sin it all the time, but not that he, he still will and grace covers it because Jesus died for those sins. But me and God's not going to have a good relationship, and I know I'm purposely dabbling. So i got to clear that, stop doing what I'm doing, repent from it, and confess it to clear myself away from it. And it says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so it's pretty important to, to confess them and, and clear there, amen? Number three, obediently pursue what God, what you know to be God's will. Obediently, that means do it. Pursue what you know to be God's will. Sometimes we don't want to do all that stuff, do we? He is the one who says, and I too will love him and show myself to him. And so that's John, and that's Jesus directly talking. So it's like, it's, it's not saying just follow the Father, it's saying do it, 
right? I, many times I think we say we're going to do and we don't really do. It's time to do, 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 right? The fish song, right? And so I think it's time that we really do what we say we're going to do. I think it's time for us to say that, you know, if we're God's people, we start doing what we know to be right. It's start doing what we know to follow God and follow God's will. And if you're going to have a true vision, I think the reason I, many times I talk about living in victory, living in, you know, thriving in life, because I have a vision. I have a vision to follow the Lord. I have a vision to, he told me early on, he said, feed my sheep, talking about his people. He said, I'll always take care of you. I was always worried about money. I'd had none. And he said, I'll always take care of you. And so I'm pretty, I'm pretty serious about having a vision to always feed his sheep, to always make sure people are getting fed, hearing about the Lord, and make sure they have a way. Um, I help many people in any, many different areas. If you need a car, sometimes we do a sandwich, or something to drink, you need a place to get sober. We do all those things, and I get beaten up and taken advantage of a lot. I was telling somebody else earlier today, and all my pastor friends, and Aaron, and Pastor Mark Booth, and Kevin West, and, and, and Jim uh, Johnston, and, and Jeff Carroll, all the pastors I fool with real regularly, I said, you know, we were talking to each other and talking about getting used and cheating. I said, you know, to be honest, if I'm not used cheat it and manipulate it and take advantage of it at least twice a month. I wasn't doing it right and digging deep enough that I, I think there's a vulnerability you got to put yourself susceptible for it. I'm not talking about going in it, purposely enabling people and doing for people when they should and people that won't try to do for themselves. But you, you got to reach at a deeper level and give opportunity to people that really don't deserve it. And so, so that's my vision is to help people get better and love the Lord and follow after God. Number four, seek God through prayer and worship. I think it's very, very important. I tell people all the time, and I get here, oh, God, I'm getting old, that when, when I'm here, it's a special place for me, that when I get here, it, and I can pray sitting in my seat, I can pray laying in my bed, I can pray riding down the street. I, I do it a lot in my truck. Me and God prayed, I'm about to run out of gas this evening. I prayed heavy. And me and God talked the whole way to that gas station. But when I'm here, he's God and I am not. And it's a special place, I think, for all of us to get to. I, I like getting here. and I really acknowledge him to be my father and bigger and taking care of everything. And so it's prayer and worship. I, I believe it's pretty important to worship. And we were talking about this evening. I come in, I was excited. I told Aaron, I said, man, can you play Crowder? And, uh, you know, it's the one with Taryn Wells. And it, it, oh, all my sins, it's just such a good song. And I was excited about worshiping tonight. And I love music as an expression of worship. And I believe we, we open up an atmosphere to the heavens that sets my heart on fire for God. So prayer and worship, guys. And number five, search the scriptures for the revealed will of God. That God will speak to me so many times. It's called the Rima word, how it becomes alive when I read the word. I love, if you know what I'm talking about, if you read along, if it'll... And if it hasn't happened to you yet, you need to get off the milk and start getting some meat. That sometimes you'll be reading that word will hit you and it will become alive inside of you. And you know it's a truth beyond all truths. It's the revealed will of God when God starts to speak to you. When a scripture becomes alive inside of you, that's a special thing. And so you're going to have to search the scriptures. In Acts 17, 11, it says, they search the scriptures daily to see whether these things were even so or not, that you couldn't lie to them or tell them anything because they knew they're going to read the word. You can't tell me. You're not going to lead me astray and all these different things. This church does this wrong. I don't get 